Well, good evening, everybody. I'm uh, feeling a bit feathery and floofy tonight, and uh, I'm okay with that. So, we're going to have a thoughts video this evening. And that thought is going to be data storage. Okay, it, it's a lot more interesting than just that word. Uh, what's going on there? The store session. So my computer did crash. <clears throat> so, we'll start from my beginning. Uh, back when I first used a computer, it was an Apple IIe. In, I believe it was second grade. And uh, back then, there was one kind of data storage. Floppy disks. The five and a quarter... Big old flippity floppy kind. And that's just how things were. Uh, back at the time that that came out, that was big enough you could run every program you'd ever want to directly from disks. And uh, usually those room wanted to save. If not, you just had another floppy, which was the one you saved stuff to. Generally, somehow the programs, the fact they were small enough to run pretty much entirely in RAM, you didn't have to keep the disk in there. You'd swap it out, put your savey disk in, and you save to it. Because these computers didn't have any kind of hard drives. I know, you young ones, there were computers before hard drives were a thing. Don't worry, I promise I'm not going to make your head explode. <sighs> so that was the start. Uh... We didn't own a computer right away. I just had some at school to work with. Uh, as we, as I grew up a little bit, we did get a home computer with a hard drive, which is awesome. 128, 120 megabytes. Again, yeah, I know. Children don't understand that's a size. <laughs> eh, make you feel any worse. The uh, the floppies were like 100 and some kilobytes. Uh, <laughs> so that 120 megs was a big jump for us. And we also got the shinier new version of the floppy disk, a three and a half inch. Oh my. All the way up to 1.44 megabytes on a single disk. That was some transport power. But this is also about the time that uh, you still need to install things to make them playable. And games pretty often very quickly started to come on more than one of those 1.44 megabyte flabo discos. So, uh, the golden days of the big old flippity floppities quickly would disappear. Uh, we did move on to uh, uh, even more floppies being a thing. You just keep getting stacks of them. Uh, there were file compression programs like PKZip and Arge that you would use to uh, make best use of your space on those floppies and uh, make it so you can potentially span large files across two of them since a lot of bigger games quickly were having, if you were trying to copy them from your computer to your friends, EXE files that were bigger than 1.44 megabytes. <sighs> Now, pretty quickly, there were uh, solutions coming out for this problem, but not like universally accepted ones, and that's where the problem comes out. Uh, yes, the zip disk did come out, but it was expensive, not universally accepted. The media cost a ton. So basically, eh, when I was a kid, we never got one. Uh, there were a bunch of other, like, super disks and, uh, ultra disks and big old disks and honkin' disks and whatever they felt like naming themselves. We never owned those. Uh, eventually, at some point, I did end up with some zip drives. But it was long after I also got the next major upgrade, which was the CD burner. So we started at 100 and some K, 1.44 megabytes, 
And this next jump was like 700 megabytes on a single CD. The hard part was you could only burn to them once. And when they came out, they weren't super cheap. They weren't expensive either. And occasionally you'd burn one and it would turn into, well, a Frisbee instead of a disc. So, eh. but I didn't have that much issues with uh, success on burn. So good on that. I didn't waste too many uh, Frisbees. And pretty quickly the price on those things dropped to like pennies per disc instead of dollar per disc. Uh, so now we went from having these floppies you have to carry around a stack of to uh, just burn a couple discs and bring that with you to your friend's house and copy all your stuff over. In fact, you can copy games that were on CDs. What a naughty concept. <laughs> Uh, that came with its own set of problems because they would start putting copy protection on. You'd have to find better burning software that would be better to avoid the copy protection software. Uh, all that work we did just to avoid paying a few dollars for games back then. But we had no money, so work is better than not having things. Eh. Uh, but anyway, so we went all the way to that, and there also came out the RW, the CDRWs. As long as your friends also had a CDRW type drive, you could take your data on a disk over to their house, put some stuff off, put some stuff back on, and that disk just kept going. It was like a floppy again. You get right back and forth to it. It wasn't super, super, super fast. But it was still faster than the floppy was, by far. The, the time it takes to copy an entire 1.44 megabytes over a floppy cable is painful. <laughs> uh, so that whole phase, moving up to CDs, was a major change up in game. Uh, not long after that, the DVD burner came out because, of course, it did. And you went from that, you know, 700 megs to like four and a half gigs you can burn on a disc. And even those had rewritable discs. The hard part there was not everybody automatically just had a DVD burner drive. Uh, I think pretty much everybody is now. I think it's like practically a standard. If you have a disc drive in your computer, it's a DVD burner at least. At least. <laughs> uh... But it quickly changed the, uh, the game up from 700 megs of storage to 4.5 gigs on a single Frisbee. Now, this may be sounding amazing right then, but data storage was, at the time, going through some major jumps. Uh, the size things were was quickly going up to accommodate for this much space, if not more. Uh, Hard drives were really exploding from size. Uh, I remember my parents' second computer was a had a six gig hard drive, which was amazing. My first real purchase desktop computer had an eighty gig, and I thought that was amazing. Uh, and I started then hundreds of gigs, and well, we're up to terabytes now. Uh, Scary how quickly those things escalated, but they sort of seem to have plateaued a little bit at the moment. We've only been having the jumps by uh, multiple terabytes every so often. I think we've hit a point of uh, data just isn't getting too much bigger for now. Uh, <laughs> may have a few terabytes worth of storage space attached to this computer because... I'm a data storage junkie. <laughs> uh, but disks, but size of files kept growing, and accessibility kept needing to be a thing more. And slowly but surely, around the same time that the DVD drive burners came out, little, some other functional things started to crop out. Uh, Data storage cards were starting to be a thing because every camera needed one. Uh, 
PDAs and things were needing them. So SD cards, memory stick, and a few other uh, variants were popping out and becoming a bigger and bigger thing. SD cards is one of the few that has really survived. Compact Flash to some extent, because it does have a faster read rate, but they're a little more costly and less common. SD and all of its grown variants, mini and micro, seem to have uh, really stood the test of time in this uh, case. They started to be a bit of a thing as far as easy to transport data and easy to store. I mean, the things were, an SD card's about the physical size of an American quarter, so it's pretty small. But it's not universal. The other critter that started to come out and is definitely what is effectively now today's floppy was the USB stick. Unlike a lot of these other standards, it isn't chained down to a specific size. Uh, yes, you could eventually have gotten like double layer burnable DVDs or the slightly bigger CDRs that were 733 megabytes. Or you could have gotten the biggest zip disk that went up to 750, but why would you? Because those things were so expensive. Oh my, by the time they came out, DVDs were like already a thing. And uh, who cares about 750 megs when you had four and a half gigs? More right, more right. <sighs> so uh, whenever they first were coming out, these uh, USB sticks could be pretty small. I, I mean, I actually have like 128 gig stick, 128 meg stick sitting in my drawer that I laugh at and never use for anything. <laughs> but it's hard to find one that's uh, less than a gig on the shelf. Uh, nowadays, it's even harder to find one less than like four gigs on the shelf. I have a few small ones in my drawer just because over time, just acquire them for random reasons. Um, get them as rewards at work or uh, corporate handouts at a event or something. Yeah, yeah, it's like, oh, cool. Just be stick on the drawer. Yes, I need to move files back and forth. Uh, I remember getting a couple of them as freebies when I ordered stuff off a of Newegg uh, years and years ago. I just, like, maybe was building a computer or something and it automatically added to my cart. It says free 4 gig USB stick. It's actually one of my favorite USB sticks still. Like, I use it often when I'm doing stuff just because I like the looks of it. Uh, it's cool. It's blue and clear and his little silver flappy thing. It's just, it just makes me happy. Uh, but nowadays, they, they've gone up. They can get to at affordable rates. Upwards of, say, like uh, 128 gigs on a USB stick at affordable levels. And I say affordable in the fact that they're not... That's about the point where you're not paying double again to double the size of memory. Once you start doubling the more than doubling the price and you double the memory, I kind of find them not as affordable and not as much point because if you're really moving that much data around, you want to consider just an external hard drive. Anywho, um, another reason why these became such a big thing, it made it easier for computer manufacturers to make laptops not necessarily containing a disk drive, which saved a substantial amount of physical space on a laptop. Yes, they were getting them super thin, but that still had existence. You still had to have space for that little laser thing to go back and forth and a spindle motor to work. And that took up space. Uh, and some form of way to get it out, Trailus was actually the slimmest version. Uh, and I think that was the last times I saw them on any kind of a super thin laptop. Now, it's more effort to find a laptop with a disk drive in it than not, unless you're getting a heavy-duty, thick old boss of a gaming laptop, which that's a lot of expense right there. 
ding, ding, ding. That's, that's, uh, I'll clear the pocketbook. Uh, but yeah, uh, they make it easier for that. That way you don't have to have a super thick laptop. Your laptop can be practically weightless. Uh, the battery being, again, the biggest thing in it. And if you're not powering a disk spinning around physically, especially, also if you have an SSD, you have another thing that's not physically spinning. So much less power use. Battery can be smaller and still have the same amount of time life on it. And all you have to do is have physical space for USB ports, which are pretty darn thin. And you still have potential movable data. Isn't it amazing? And, uh, good news for all you other uh, train game people. The SD card slot is usually survived. And, uh, some, usually there's a multi-purpose card slot in most of these laptops that hits two or three of the variants that are about the same size. It's been dropping in quantity of things that it does anymore. Most of the newer ones I've seen take SD and some other versions that were just other names for SD at the time. Uh, it all became basically SD. <laughs> uh, used to be you'd get ones that would take like SD and memory stick because they were physically about the same width and depth. But less and less memory stick since Sony doesn't really push their particular brand uh, memory device anymore. Go figure. SD kind of won that battle. But hey. Uh, yeah. So interesting to see going from this hundred and some K flippity floppities when I was super, super young. I don't even think I still have any in the the uh, old stuff drawer. I think I finally had thrown them out because I thought I am absolutely never going to actually use these anymore which is probably right. I do have a couple of three and a half stored, uh, like ones that I physically, I bought games on. I had actual branded games listed on the labels, so I kept those. Uh, <sighs> I, I'm going to be sad whenever CDs and DVDs and Blu-rays become less a thing that a computer, even a desktop, actually uses. Again, it's oftentimes you'll get a new computer desktop even. No disk drive. Just no disk drive. I still like it. I like to have some compatibility from the past. Especially since I have a lot of stuff stored on CDs and DVDs that uh, I might want to be able to you know, read occasionally. Uh, and it's kind of nice if you have one that also does play Blu-rays that you can just use your computer as effectively uh, and any kind of video media player at this point. Blu-rays are a little bit wonky. I've had enough trouble with software playing with those, but at least almost any DVD will just pop in and whiz up and play right. So another good reason to keep a physical disk drive on hand. <laughs> ah, memories about memories. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hot, big old flippity floppity down to a little little stick the size of a pack of gum that holds probably more data than I can imagine back when I was a little kid. <laughs> Think of how many logo pictures I could have saved onto a uh, uh, 64 gig memory stick that's sitting on my desk upstairs and just kind of like, going, oh, it's just it's up there in case I need one upstairs, you know. It's just a little data stack. Ah, a little, ah. <laughs> yeah. Eh, just fun to see technologies change over the years. And I, I look forward to seeing it change even more over the coming time. <sighs> well, that's more or less my thoughts on data storage, the portable variant for uh, today. Uh, where do you fit in this uh, evolution chain? Uh, where'd you start off? Were you back with me on the uh, big old five and a quarter flippity floppities? Were you a three and a half incher? 
Would you come in on the age of the CD? And that floppy drive that was on the computer was kind of a relic that uh, you never touched. <sighs> I'd love to know. Please let me know in the comments. Or any point that you were the most happy about things where you felt, man, this is where our computers got it right. They got it right. Anyway, yep, comment about that stuff down there. Uh, and of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the little dingly bell for the little dingly bell. Let you know when I'm posting a new video. Who knows? Could be a daisy video. Could be a daisy video with lots of feather boas. Because. Because. And uh, we'll go ahead and tickle your fancies again <laughs> next time. Uh, and of course, my Patreon link will be in the description box. Hello, if you're so inclined. I always appreciate everything that's given there. It does help support me and the channel. It makes me smile. But what makes me smile the most is knowing that people watch my videos. So please, come watch my video. Share with your friends. Definitely thank you for spending some time with us, Bunners. I look forward to seeing you all again sometime soon. And, uh, you know, stay bunny, stay fluffy, stay feathery. I'll see you all again on a future video. So we're going to stop.